So good morning, everyone. In this presentation, I reflect on my recent work, and I have often viewed the excellent work from others and uh, on the internet and in the library, and I have begun to think about the how illustrations work. So I think I should learn the history of the art and the illustration, and the collect the illustrations to find a style that most suitable for me. So first, I will introduce the Expressionism, in which the most famous painters and Mongol and Kandinsky, they believe that everything in the world could be drawn using the most basic elements of the art, uh, such as point, line, and the surface. And all colors are made up of the most basic colors, uh, like red, yellow, and blue. So they choose to paint everything with these basic elements of the art. So these are some modern artworks under the influence of the expressionism, and we can see that the points, lines, the surface, and the other basic colors made up these pictures of the artwork. The next one is the pop art which is the most influential of the modern artworks, not only in illustrations, but also in different directions of the art. The most influential and representative painter in, in the pop art is Andy Warhol. From this artist, from this artist's work, illustration influenced by pop art begin to be widely used in packaging, posters, and other more commercial areas. And after a few years, the style of the pop art changed to simplifying the outline of the scenes, adding lines and using the spots as a background. And there are some modern examples of the pop art, some commercial packaging illustrations, digital paintings, and the film poster illustrations. And it's clear that pop art illustration has a strong commercial style. This picture is from an artist that I like and shows some influence of the pop art in the modern illustration. And finally, there is a cubism in which these painters like to take objective things and put them together in some way. By subjectively dismantling them, reorganize them, and then put them together. And these are some examples of the Picasso's artwork, where he uh, notices the body of the core, and then simplifies it as much as possible, step by step, and finally get a cubist core. And there are some other modern illustrations that was influenced by the cubism. And the next is my experiment. And I think that if I can control these different style features, I might be able to use this same model to draw the different styles of the illustrations and to make the difference between these three styles more obviously. And the firstly, I outline the character in a simple line. And the next is drawing the simple details such as the shadow of the character and the hair and the border line between the light and the dark and the first one is pop art and as we can see the color is very important in pop art and, and so i did a research and i found that any choice of the color in this area is suitable for the pop art and then I choose these dots to erase the background to make the pop art style more obviously. And the next one is the expressionism. And the same model was used as the last experiment. But in this time, I try to print the illustrations with, uh, with the most important and the basic elements of the expressionism. Uh, the three most basic colors in the painting, red, yellow, and blue, are used to print a part of the shadow of the character. And then the simple lines and the basic colors to create the background. And as you can see, 
and each person's work is complete. And the last, and the last one is the cubism. I try to dismantle this model and reorganize it to further simpl uh, sim simplify the original complex outline of the model. And uh, using long straight lines to summarize the model. And then uh, next, uh, I use uh, some very strange colors to enrich the picture. A cubist, uh, a cubist illustration is complete. And then the next, I will introduce some artist whose sculpture of strange animals interest me. And the first is the Nicola Hex. The animals and Hex mean subject things, usually sculpted in straw and plaster. This was unusual for an artist in the 1980s when the abstract sculpture and uh, uh, installation art had become the norm, norm in the art world. Many of the sculptures were then cast in bronze, and that every detail of the animals by plaster and straw was reproduced. There are some very special sculptures from the Nicola Hex. Uh, the material is bronze of the other materials. And the, another one is Cat Clock, who is good at making a variety of this sculpture, combining animal and human faces, and use this sculpture as the inspiration for her illustrations. And she, she, and she thinks that our complex nature allows us to dominate animals well at the same time loving respect and uh, cel celebrating them we identity as separate from animals uh, we also identify with the animals more than anything else on the earth and uh, her materials for this works is the skin of the animals and it stitched over a hand sculpted human face and these are some of her other works, and she has created a series of the illustrations based on her sculptures. And this is another one of my experiments. There, uh, there are have some weird animals, and I looked for the inspiration in some religion documents, and tried to draw them, and finally add them to my collection. And uh, thank and thanks for listening. That's all my presentation.